All right, guys, it finally happened. So Scott Schaefer has finally released this video where he basically exposes Caleb Hammer and some of the serious stuff that has been going around uh, regarding this guy who does happen to be one of the biggest uh, YouTubers in the financial space. And so I'm just going to go ahead and play some of the key points of his video. I have the timestamps written down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play it and then I'm going to react to it. And we're just going to kind of go from there. OK, so. Let's go ahead and start from the beginning where basically and, and honestly, this is a huge red flag to me because at the very beginning of the video and Scott, in my opinion, did do a good job of this. He made it very clear that he tried to reach out to Caleb Hammer several times and Caleb Hammer at first was, you know, pretty cool about it. But then when Scott started to push back and, you know, kind of say, well, hey, can I get this or can I get that or, you know, just not just downright, you know, take his word for everything, which is what, you know. Caleb is probably used to because I've already explained to you guys, this guy has an insane fan base. He probably has a bunch of yes men around him. That's how a lot of these huge YouTubers operate. And so once Scott didn't give him that treatment that he's probably used to, yes, Caleb, anything you want, Caleb, yes, Caleb, you know, then Caleb started to go on the offense and start to say, oh, well, I'm going to sue you with huge red flag to me. But let's go ahead and hear from Scott's mouth. Here we go. He then made his first of many legal threats, stating that, in preparation for your video, we will be ready for legal repercussions for defamatory statements with very clear evidence proving our case. Okay, so we can just stop right there. Um, to me, this is a red flag, because I already told you guys, most people who actually sue don't threaten to sue. They just do it. Take Spencer Cornelia, for example. Spencer Cornelia got sued by this guy named Derek Moneyberg, and you guys know the story. He ended up spending $300,000 to basically defend himself. And he uh, tried to get his attorney's fees back, and he didn't get it back. The judge ruled against it. So he's $300,000 in the hole, right? Well, before Derek Moneyberg sued him, Moneyberg never commented on his YouTube vi videos or emails or anything and saying, oh, I'm going to sue you, I'm going to sue you. He just did it. Whenever I see people do this stuff where they try to threaten people, I typically tend to think chances are they're probably not going to do it. What they're trying to do is they're trying to scare you so you don't put out the video that you're going to put out. That's typically what they tend to do. And, I, and yeah, I really don't think Caleb understands that lawsuits are extremely grueling for both parties. They cost a lot of money. They take a lot of time. And we all know that in this life, the most valuable thing anybody has is not money, but it is your time. So I think it's a red flag that Scott's reaching out to Caleb. Caleb doesn't like what Scott's saying. And instead of giving all of the evidence, he says, I'm not going to give you anything, even though I have the evidence to prove that I'm innocent here and I didn't do anything. I'm not going to give it to you. Oh, by the way, if you release this video, you're going to get sued. So let's say Caleb decides to sue Scott, right? Which I don't think he will, just to be honest. I really don't think so. I, I think that would be crazy. I think that would be so dumb. It would, it would immensely backfire on Caleb, in my opinion. If Scott could just get a decent lawyer, it would backfire on Caleb. That's number one. Number two. If Caleb tried to sue Scott, well, it's undeniable that Caleb is a public figure. Even if it's just a limited purpose public figure, he's still a public figure, right? And so what would have to happen in the defamation lawsuit is Caleb's team would have to prove actual malice. How do you prove that Scott maliciously posted defamatory statements about you when he reached out to you several times? And you didn't want to give him the information. So how do you prove malice? There was no malice. He tried to reach out to you. He tried to get your side of the story. He tried to put everything together and get the facts right. You refused, Caleb, to give him your side of the story. So in my opinion, there's no defamation lawsuit here. You cannot argue defamation because he gave you the chance to defend yourself. He gave you the chance to tell your side of the story. And you didn't want to give it to him, which makes me that makes my antennas go up just to be frank. I'm just saying, I mean, I don't know if any of this is true. I have no idea. But the fact that your first instinct, the first thing you do, instead of just saying, hey, Scott, this is what really happened. I didn't do any of this. This is what happened here. This is taken out of context. Here's why. Instead of doing that, you're just like, oh, well, if you put this video out, we're prepared for legal. And the repercussions for defamatory statements are very clear. We have very clear evidence proving our case. It's like. This is clearly a scare tactic, okay? Clearly. So let's continue with uh, the video. Now keep in mind that this was after I had sent him only two emails and was just trying to get the details around the initial case of inappropriate behavior I was first aware of. Threatening legal action so quickly in the initial fact-gathering stage without any video being made yet really set off my alarms that something odd was going on here. 
Why was Caleb so defensive about me looking into this case further? If the initial person who came forward was so obviously a liar, why quickly jump to legal threats against someone who was trying to tell a story that would present all sides equally? Caleb claimed- I agree with this. And you know, I kind of said this in my last video on this situation and there were a crap ton of Caleb Hammer simps that were just saying like, you know, why would he give anything to Scott? This guy's a proven liar. Zeke's a liar. It's a lie. Why would Caleb do this? My thing is, if you have a YouTuber with a pretty decent platform and you're already threatened by what he's going to possibly publish, which we know that because you're threatening to sue him. My question is, why not just corroborate? Like, it's, it's almost like this third party, this other YouTuber is doing an investigation. If you were truly innocent and you truly did nothing wrong, I just don't understand why you would go to lawsuit route. I really don't. I don't understand why you would just say, okay, well, since I'm innocent, all of this is being taken out of context and I did nothing. Here you go, Scott. This, this, and this happened and that, that, and that happened. And this is the truth. I just don't understand it. So in my opinion, Caleb takes the L here because if you really didn't do anything, why not just give Scott all of the information? And I think that whole argument of, well, he's just a drama farmer. He's malicious. He's not going to do anything good with the information. I think that's a bunch of BS because let's say you give him all the information, right? And he takes your information and he twists it up and he lies. Well, in my opinion, now you actually have a defamation lawsuit, in my opinion, because you literally gave him the facts. He chose to ignore the facts and he chose to spread lies instead. To me, that would have actually given you a defamation lawsuit if that actually happened. But instead, you didn't even do that. You didn't even give him anything. You, you gave him nothing. You didn't communicate. You just kept saying, if you post this, I'm going to sue you. If you post, it, I'm going to sue you, which I just need you YouTubers to understand this whole lawsuit stuff doesn't scare anybody anymore. Like that doesn't bother us. You know why? Because us YouTubers in the grifter slang space, we've gotten smarter. We, we, we've learned, like we already learned from people like Spencer and other people who got sued in the past. We've already learned. All we have to do is get a lawyer ourselves and make sure that when we post our video, there's no way that you could prove that we defamed you. As long as we have a decent amount of money in our bank account to pay a lawyer to defend us, we're good. Because what's going to happen is, okay, fine, you sue, you're going to lose the case. I can either hit you with an anti-slap uh, uh, suit, you know, anti-slap suit because you're filing a frivolous lawsuit against me, or I could file a lawsuit and get my attorney's fees back. Either way, it's going to hurt you. And also, you know, discovery could possibly hurt you. And, you know, I would be, again, the other reason why I would be very shocked if Caleb sued is because if you sue and you've got these weird accusations against you, Scott's going to be able to get a lot of different documents and records from you via the discovery phase. The discovery phase is where, you know, both parties basically, you know, file with the court and get documents from each party and you have to give it to them. So Scott's going to be able to get text messages, emails, all kinds of different things that I'm sure Caleb probably doesn't want to get out. And to be honest with you, the fact that Caleb has been so defensive, I suspect, I have no idea. If, I have no idea. This is true. This is just me speculating. I suspect that there might be something deeper that Caleb might have to hide. That's just my opinion. Okay. Let's move on to the next part. This is clearly going to be a long video. We're already at eight minutes, which whatever. Okay, here we go. All right, let's go ahead and watch another part of Scott Shaver's video. Here we go right here. Caleb ended up leaving a very disturbing audio message on Zeke's phone. I can tell you're a cool dude and I want to like, if there's anything, any connect. Okay, before we play the voicemail, I just want to say something real quick. Um, this voicemail actually came out like a few weeks ago. Actually, it came out longer than that, but it was covered by me and other channels a few weeks ago. And I got to be honest, everything about this voicemail is extremely weird, extremely strange, uh, disturbing. And in my opinion, if because let's keep in mind, right, Dave Ramsey and Caleb Hammer are like very similar, like Caleb Hammer is just the new generation's Dave Ramsey. Right. In my opinion, if this voicemail got leaked of Dave Ramsey, he would lose a lot of his followers. And I think a lot of news publications like The Wall Street Journal and things like that would absolutely cover this story and talk about it. And they would, you know, talk about how like weird this is. I just want to make that clear. So I'm not saying that this voicemail necessarily means that Caleb did anything weird to anybody or assaulted anybody, whatever. I'm not saying that, but at the very least, you got to admit that this voicemail is extremely disturbing. And I can just speak for myself personally. For me, this voicemail alone, these voice messages disqualify Caleb uh, from me wanting to view his content. I don't want to watch somebody who does who's weird like this. I, I just think it's weird that you would have a former guest on your show communicate to them in this particular manner. I, I just don't want to get my finance content for somebody who engages in this stuff. That's just me personally. Okay. Let's go ahead and play the video though. Connections that I have, which I've built a lot of connections in Austin, anything that I'm able to kind of link you to, you know, I definitely want to be helpful. 
the main reason I haven't wanted to have this conversation via text is, sorry, I had to burp. Um, one, I'm not used to OnlyFans, <laughs> straight up. Uh, it's not really my scene. Uh, you know, I'm a personal finance dude. I don't really know anything about that. Uh, two, I'm straight. I'm like 90% straight. I've definitely fooled around because I'm open-minded. Um, and you know, when you get drunk, whatever. But Okay, first off, that was funny. He was like, and second off, I'm straight with a question mark. And he was like, I'm like 90% certain I'm straight. So, okay. Uh, Caleb, just come out the closet, bro. <laughs> okay. It's 2024. There's nothing wrong with being gay. Okay. But like, come on, bro. Like, <laughs> why did you say that with a question mark? He was like, and second off, I'm straight. Like, it was like a, it was like a, am I straight? Maybe like, it was like, kind of like that. It's like, all right, bro, just come out the closet. Nothing wrong with that. Just, you know, that, that, that I just thought that was kind of funny the way he worded it. Uh, okay. Let's keep going. You know, so, and this is like, a you know, a man on man thing. Uh, but essentially, I think, well, from the conversation I had with him, the pay will be dependent on what you're willing to do. And what you're willing to do is set by you. So what he would like to do, you guys. Okay, so Kalo's about to go into what the guy would actually uh, like to do. Um, I think the weirdest part about this is why would you get yourself on camera? And again, keep in mind, guys, this was before Caleb became famous. Caleb had probably had no idea that these messages would ever get out. He had no idea that he would one day get a million followers on YouTube. This was years ago. This was way before uh, Caleb started blowing up on YouTube. So I want to make sure we add that context here. Okay. The other piece of context that I do want to add is Zeke did have an OnlyFans and Zeke communicated to Caleb that he has an OnlyFans and I guess he wanted to, I don't know, make content or get more into it. And so what Caleb did was he put him in contact, well, in a weird way, but he put him in contact with another guy who wanted to shoot OnlyFans content with him. I think the mistake Caleb made, and I think what makes this so weird is for me, why didn't you just say, hey, man, I found an opportunity for you. I know you're into the whole OnlyFans thing. Uh, I know a guy. Here's his contact information. My question will be, why didn't you just do that? That's what Caleb should have done. Hey, here's the contact of somebody who's in the OnlyFans industry. Go ahead and text them. Let them know that I you know, gave them your number or whatever and go from there. The fact that Caleb sent all these explicit voice messages saying all these crazy things uh, to Zeke is just, it, it's weird. It really is. And also, you know, I think the age does play into fact too. Um, I get it. Zeke is an adult, but I'm just speaking from my opinion here. This is just my opinion. If I'm 23, 24, 25, whatever age Caleb is, I'm not speaking in this manner to a 19 year old. I get it. He's an adult. He's legal, whatever. I'm still not speaking in this manner to a 19, somebody who has teen in their age, 19. It's, it's, it's weird, man. Okay. Let's actually play what he said. What you're willing to do is set by you. So what he would like to do, you guys make out. He would like to do that. What he, you guys, what he would like you guys to do him, fill you up. He would like to do that. You can say no about any of these. He would like to play with your dick. And see that that's why I didn't want to type this out either, because that's like weird for me to say. I don't you know, it's not like we're friends or anything, but that's what he wants to do. He wants to uh give you a blowjob. Uh and, oh I was also told and confirmed with him that your face would be hidden, uh blurred out and hidden, your identity would be hidden. Um um and then if you wanted to give a blowjob, you could. Again, you would make more from that. And uh, you know, he would eat your butt <laughs> and you would make more for that. You can say no as well. Uh, uh, you know, you could top him. He could top you. Whatever you're willing to do comes with more money, but you could literally do nothing. You could literally just lay back and let him just touch you for the video. And I guess for some reason, his subscribers love that and you'd get paid for it. So really that's what it is. And you know, I, there's things that I think I don't feel comfortable talking about in this kind of situation and I'd be happier to talk over in person. Um, maybe I'm just that kind of person. Uh, so you just let me know what you think. When that audio message was first leaked, a lot of people claimed it was fake. All right. So yeah, no matter what you say, that was weird. Again, if somebody like Dave Ramsey ever did anything like this, Dave Ramsey would probably be canceled just to be honest, or at the very least he would lose a pretty decent chunk of his audience. To me, I don't think Caleb Hammer is any different. 
again, I'm not saying that Caleb necessarily did anything awful. I just think that these voice messages are weird. And, you know, when you add the context and all the dynamics in it, it, it just I'm not interested in watching content for somebody who does that. I'm sorry. And, you know, just. Yeah. OK, let's go to um, another timestamp. Um, right here, actually. Here we go. And in 2024, with advancement in AI voice cloning technology, I understand why some people believed that. However, despite that, Caleb has confirmed on his Reddit, as well as in emails to me, that the voicemail you heard is 100% him, and he makes no claim to it being altered in any way. What is disputed about that voice message is why it was left, with Caleb and Zeke having very different stories. Zeke talked about doing OnlyFans modeling on his first appearance on the show, and wanted help to grow on Twitch and OnlyFans from Caleb. Caleb's version of events was that he was simply trying to help Zeke out by connecting him with another guy to hook up with and make money from adult content on OnlyFans. After talking to Zeke, he made it clear to me that he only ever wanted to fuck bitches and get money. Talking to him further, I asked him why Caleb seemed so interested in trying to hook him up with- Alright, so you got that. Uh, let me go ahead and skip around. So, you know, Scott basically proves that um, those voice messages are 100% Caleb Hammer. So forget what anybody has to say. You know, Caleb's little simp army, those messages were sent by Caleb Hammer. Uh, that's weird. Okay. All right, let's keep going. YouTube career, he made a post explaining he had offered OnlyFans work unsolicited to several of the actors who appeared on his show and wanted to ask his audience if they felt this was appropriate. After his audience overwhelmingly made it clear they felt this was not appropriate and questioned why he was doing this, Caleb quickly deleted the post. Okay. So Scott says that, okay, so Scott says that Caleb posted a post about OnlyFans. Let me just move this mic over so I can move in a little closer. During the first six months, blah, 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 many streamers also have OnlyFans, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I see it right here. So it says down there, being a very open-minded person, I figured it would be nice to offer potential opportunities to some guests. I've done this for a variety of jobs and connects as I want to see them improve of three to four times with the actors. I offered if they wanted the connections to some creators that had only fans. And if so, I would just connect them. Yeah, that's definitely weird. It's it's hold on one second. Just adjusting my mic. Okay. Yeah, I definitely think that's weird to post on your Reddit and basically admit that you've connected several of your you know, your, I guess your previous guest to OnlyFans uh, people or whatever. I just, that whole thing is just weird. Like this stuff should not be mixed together. Like you still got to remember at the end of the day, you're in finance, like at least be somewhat professional, you know, it's definitely weird. Okay. Let me go to another part. Um, Yeah. I think right here is actually where I want to go. Okay. Here we go. Let's play this part. That way we, we did not, um, we did not really uh, touch on, topics uh like that very much the topics that he felt were inappropriate are what we're going to be focusing on the first one that made several people uncomfortable was caleb's comments about finding a 16 year old boy hot now in this chat group everyone has nicknames instead of their actual name being used i was told that caleb picked many of these nicknames but a few were picked by other members caleb was allegedly known as super ho diddly ho so the user known as has sex all the time says, what's this hit beat you got playing? Super Ho responds with smoking is gross. Uncut responds with, so is saying that 15 year old boys are hot. Dancing says, oh damn. Super Ho responds with 16. Uncut says, doesn't make your case any better. Super Ho responds with, haha, thinking from a picture is cute isn't bad. I don't think the person was cut because they are young. He had facial hair, like, come on. Uncut says why screenshot because Super Ho had taken a picture of this guy's Snapchat of his 16 year old friend and Super Ho says he hot is gay please. Uncut says he's 16 and no effing perv. Super Ho responds with shame. Uncut says what would the age of consent in Michigan? Super Ho says 16. Uncut says Texas is 17 and Super Ho says shame. This is the message I sent to Caleb to confirm if they were real, which is when he replied that they were very out of context. I asked the informant if there was more context. Okay, so again, this is my problem with Caleb. If the messages are very out of context, why don't you explain the context to Scott? I don't, I don't understand. It's like, I'm not going to explain the context to you. All I'm going to keep telling you is everything you're saying is out of context. And if you post anything, I will sue you. Just explain the context. I do not understand these people, man. 
context to this story, which he replied that there wasn't. To give a little bit more context, I, I reached out to Caleb for comment on this. He said this was taken very out of context, didn't give me any other info around that. So just anything you know around this this particular incident. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> Uh, it's interesting that he'd say that, uh, particularly because I'm I'm not sure there's there's any more context uh, out of which it could be taken. Um, that is the extent of of the context surrounding this was that the the friend uh, with the nickname Uncut posted this this picture of his friend who was 16 years old uh, was posting uh, him as as a part of um, posting. He posted the photo to congratulate him uh, and and to express gratitude for him, um, and uh, and and that's I mean that's it that's the context. And then Caleb saw his story on Snapchat and and took that screenshot, and it was at that point that uh, Uncut questioned it, and and the rest of it takes place here in this group chat. There's there's no other context out of which it could have been taken. Now, I do have to say, since Caleb has threatened to sue me, that 16-year-olds are actually at the legal age of consent in some states, including Caleb's home state of Michigan. Oh, come on, Scott. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I get it, Scott. He's he, he he's saying this because, you know, he's trying to protect himself. I get it, but I don't care. If it, that's the one thing about the law. I need you guys to understand, and I work in law, by the way. I actually, uh, I work, uh, you guys know, I work for an insurance company. I work in compliance. I'm compliance counsel for an insurance company. I work in law all the time, okay? One thing I know about the law, it's not always right, okay? I'm just going to leave it at that. It's not always right. I do not think that the age of consent should be 16 in any state. That's just my opinion. But even beyond that, I don't care that it's legal in Michigan or whatever. It's still weird, okay? And I don't care. You know, you can say, oh, well, the age of consent, it's still weird to be, you know, and of course, this is all allegedly. I have no idea if this is true, even though based on the evidence Scott posted, it looks like it is, but I don't know. Uh, Scott, uh, or at least, uh, so Caleb apparently was 23 at this time, or at least in his twenties, which is still like weird to say that a 16 year old is hot, you know, in my opinion, I think that's weird, you know, whether it's a boy or a girl, I don't care which gender it is. Uh, if you're in your twenties and you're saying that a 16 year old is hot, I think that's extremely weird. Again, this is allegedly, so who knows if it's really true or not. Uh, even though Scott just posted the messages right there. And apparently that other person is Caleb and Scott also reached out to Caleb and Caleb said that it was taken out of context. So I mean, do what you want with that. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, I guess we'll play a little bit and then we'll close the video. So maybe he doesn't think anything is wrong with saying a 16 year old boy is hot. Despite that, it seems a lot of people, myself included, think that it's inappropriate for a then 23 year old Caleb to say things like that. It made members of the group uncomfortable, and just last year, the influencer known as Just Pearly Things made a similar tweet saying... Yeah, so, yeah, I agree. At the very least, you know, all of this stuff that is going on with Caleb is, like, you know, pretty inappropriate at the very least, you know? So, like I said, is this something where, you know, people are necessarily going to cancel him? I, I, I don't know. Probably not. I mean, I did go ahead and look at Caleb's recent video, and I do see a lot of comments down there that are like kind of referencing Scott's video and kind of calling Caleb out. So who knows? But at the very least, uh, this stuff is very creepy. I am going to be very interested in how this plays out. Um, this is what I think Caleb should do. I'm going to give my advice here to Caleb, even though I know he's not going to take it. Uh, if I were you, Caleb, I w if, if you're truly innocent, which you keep claiming that you are, and you know, you keep saying that everything's taken out of context, you know, it's not like what it seems. Well, Caleb, at the very least, you know, if you're a reasonable person, you got to at least admit that some of this stuff is, you know, it, it's it's not a good look. Right. At the very least. So so now that we all can mutually agree, at least those of us who are not Caleb simps, we can all mutually agree that this is not a good look. I would say instead of suing Scott, which I think is going to backfire on you, I actually think that would be worse. I think the best thing you could really do since you say that you're innocent and maybe you are. I think that you should on another channel, maybe your vlog channel. Post a video with all of the receipts, put, you know, make a like a well put together video with all the receipts and explain the context behind all of these things that are coming out and share your side of the story. I think that's the best way that you could go about it. I, I don't think a lawsuit's going to help because then you're going to go through discovery and now you're wasting time and 
at the end of the day, it's going to be a frivolous lawsuit. You're not going to win the lawsuit against Scott. If you sue him for defamation, you're not going to win that lawsuit. I promise you, you're not going to win because he did not defame you. He gave you a chance to defend yourself. You didn't want to do it. So you can't say this guy's lying. He's spreading lies. He's defaming me. It's causing me, you know, you know, mental issues and it hurt my reputation. All this. He gave you the chance to defend yourself on multiple occasions. You chose not to, which I just got to be honest, not a good look either when somebody keeps saying, hey, well, can you explain this? Okay, I understand you're saying that this is false and there's context missing. Can you provide the context? And then you don't want to provide the context. This whole thing smells fishy. It doesn't look good. I'm going to be very interested to see what happens. And when we get an update of what happens, whether he actually sues Scott or releases a response video, whatever, I will definitely make sure to update you guys. So, uh, yeah, that'll go ahead and conclude today's video. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.